Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is show you how to work um, some geometric distribution probabilities using the technologies in our course, which is the jump software and the TI-84 graphing calculator. Uh, to do this, uh, let's look at the week two material and inside of the geometric distribution notes, I believe there's some uh, examples that I worked in there by hand, and we could, you know, actually uh, apply those to the to the uh, software. So I'm going to go to learning modules right now, and go to the week two material. And when I get in the week two, as you can see, there's the notes on the general dis uh, discrete distribution. A couple videos showing how to use the TI calculator and how to use Jump to calculate means and variances. Um, and then here is the geometric distribution notes. So I'm going to open those up. So remember the notes talk through about what the geometric distribution is, its properties, formulas, the generation of the formula, uh, and what it's all about. And then I worked an example down here using a telemarketer, right? So let's give this uh, example a look, and I'll show you how to work a couple of these parts on um, jump, and then we'll jump over to the uh, calculator as well. All right, so it says a telemarketer makes successive calls in order to sell a service that their company provides. The probability the telemarketer will get a call back on any particular call is 5%. All right, so that in the scheme of things, that's a pretty low probability, which means that most of the time, um, you know, people are hanging up on this telemarketer. You know, the, uh, the, the probability of success here is only 5%, which means that 95% um, of the time the, the telemarketer is getting hung up on, and that's what Part A asks you about. It says, what's the probability the telemarketer won't get a call back? All right, so that's obviously 95%. All right, so that answer is listed here, as you can see in Part A. Um, so that's not a geometric probability at all. That's just some common sense um, ideas here with the properties of the discrete distribution. Remember, um, the, the probability of success and probability of failure for the geometric distribution has to add to 1. So the 5% success and the 95% fail rate Together, those add to 100% or 1. All right, so letter B. What is the probability that the first callback the telemarketer gets occurs on their 10th call? All right, so remember how the geometric distribution works. You, if, they, if they've got their first success on the 10th call, that means the first nine times they didn't do so well. Uh, so they failed nine times in a row. And then finally, on their 10th uh, try, they got their callback. So that remember that the probability of failure is 95%. So 0.95, and I did this example work down here by hand. In other words, the probability x, the random variable, takes on nine failures before you win for the first time the telemarketer. So it's the probability of failing, which is 0.95 to the ninth power, multiplied by the probability of winning, which is 0.05. So when you work that out in your calculator, you get about a 3% probability, as you can see here. So let me show you how to work this same part B uh, in jump. Actually, it's pretty easy. So if you remember, I asked you when you install the Jump software to um, install a couple of add-ins. So I have a statistical calculators add-in, and I have this teaching modules add-in. Now remember, if you um, don't rem if you don't have this add-ins menu yet, or if you're missing a, one or more of these add-ins, um, you're gonna have to install them, and that's in the software. So when you click this Jump software download link, it opens up my Dropbox. And I have a folder for add-ins. And it's only, I only put two add-ins in there. We'll be using a couple more as the semester rolls along, but right now these two are fine. So you can download these add-ins. They're very small. And when you double-click them, they magically install into Jump for you. And Jump will add, um, you know, create this add-ins menu, and you won't have to do anything. It's very easy. Just double-click those little files. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up um, in the add-ins uh, menu the teaching modules. And if you go down, you'll see there is a um, applet called the Distribution Calculator. So I'm going to click that. This is a great little uh, calculator, and there are several calculators in that um, add-ins menu, as you can see. And we're going to use every single one of them throughout the semester. Uh, this one's great because it, it, you know, obviously when you open it up, you can see the normal distributions there for obvious reasons. Um, that it's one of the biggest distributions we're going to be studying in the course. Uh, but when you pull down this little menu right here, you can see there's a whole bunch of distributions here. 
All right, so we want to choose the geometric distributions. So when I go down to G naturally, you see, hey, what's going on? I don't see the geometric. And that is because the geometric distribution um, is really, uh, think of it as an offspring to a parent. And the parent distribution is actually called negative binomial. We'll be talking about the negative binomial distribution in week three. So right now, you want to go to geometric, but it's not there. And that's because it's really in disguise an offspring of negative binomial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose negative binomial right now. So when I choose that, you see things start to change a little bit, which are inputs. Now, really, the distribution menu, the, I mean, this calculator is super easy to use. It picks your brain. It says, what's the probability of success? All right, well, as you can see, there's some defaults. When you open it up, these values, I believe, will always be there. Um, but it picks your brain. It says, okay, what's the probability of success? And that probability, remember, for the telemarketer is 0 0.05. And every time you change a number and click somewhere else, you'll notice that the shape of the distribution changes. This is a heavily skewed to the right distribution, as you'll see. Notice it changes. Uh, number of successes, 1. So that you'll see the shape change again. And now it wants an input parameter. In other words, it wants to know, um, what are you looking for here? Well, we're looking for... Um, nine failures before you win for your first time. So now I want to have nine here, but you got to be careful because notice there's a whole bunch of different probability choices here. And so it says, you know, calculations. So look at the first button here. This first button, when you put a value in there, like for instance, say I put in five right here and hit enter. This works out the probability that X takes on a value less than or equal to whatever value you put in here. So if I put a five right there, it works out five, four, three, two, one, and zero, and then gets all those probabilities and adds them up. That's a cumulative distribution function, a CDF. So that's working out a, a chunk of probabilities and adding them all for you. And as you can see, it works it out and puts the answer right there. Uh, if you want to do greater than five, you would click this button and notice the shade changes. So less than or equal to five, and then this shade is greater than five, and then you can see the probability change. This is the one that we're going to use right here. This is going to be the one that gives me, it's technically in between. You're less than or equal to one value, but bigger than another. So we're going to have to kind of trick it to, to get the thing we're looking for. And of course, there's a, a, third, a fourth um, choice here, which shades on the outskirts. So this shades to the left, this shades to the right, this sh third one shades in between, and this fourth one shades on the outside. So the one we want, actually, is the third one. So how it works, and it's a little weird, and it's just in the way the um, applet was created, this, this calculator, um, it's, it has a lower and an upper boundary for what, what you want to say. Now, technically, I want to work out nine failures before my first success. Now, remember, the answer is right here, 0.0315. It's a very quick calculation on the calculator. What I want to show you is how you work this on, on jump. So it's a little bit weird how they do it. So what you do is... The upper, you always put in the value that you want. I really want nine deep down inside. And that's what this is, right? Nine failures. Now, um, naturally, you could put this value here, uh, anything less than nine. And what it will do is it'll work out the probability of being in between those two values. Now, to trick jump and to give me the thing I want, I'm going to put an eight there. If I put an eight there, and you know, naturally, it's the answer I want, as you can see, 0 0.0315. 0 0.0315, and you're like, wow, you know, I'm not really understanding why this is doing it when I put an 8 and a 9 in there. What's going on there? So what I'll do is to show you, it, Jump does a really good job with its graphs. So what I'll do is I'm going to um, right-click on the graph, and I'm going to go to this um, size and scale, and I'm going to click the x-axis scale, and you can see it's going to 134.5. I'm going to change that to a 20, just so it blows up the graph a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so this will make a lot more sense to you. So here's zero failures right here before your first success. One failure, two, three, four failures before your first success. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is how it works. It goes from eight to nine, and as you can see, it is shading that bar for nine failures before your first success. And that's what this is. Now, how do you know it's before your first success? Well, you put that value right there for number of successes. As you're going to learn, the negative binomial distribution will accept any number of successes. And we'll be talking about that again in week three.
So uh, there's one other button I should talk about over here is the type of calculation. This is just a backwards forward scenario. Uh, right now, I'm giving input values and I'm asking jump to calculate a probability for me. So in, other, in other words, we gave it the 0.05 and the 1 and these values here and it crunched a probability. Uh, jump has the ability to give it a probability and it'll go backwards and tell you what these input values are. Um, you've done that um, calculation uh, in statistics one using the inverse normal distribution. I'm sure you remember that um, from back in your statistics one days. All right, now, um, one other thing you could do um, in this is you could, rather than using jump, you could just use your TI graphing calculator. And it does virtually the same thing, although um, it thinks of it a little bit differently. Um, so if I go to stat, I'm sorry, no, that's stat. It's in the distribution menu. Yeah, right, right here above vars. Um, if I go second, vars and go to the bottom you can see there's geometric distribution calculators so I'm going to choose letter E for geomet PDF all right so my calculator is the old-fashioned one and it says geomet PDF and notice the cursor is blinking so this is how the calculator thinks of it it wants as its first input the probability of winning which we know was 0 0.05 for this telemarketer and then I have to hit a comma and then it needs to know, when do you want to win? Well, this telemarketer was going to win for the first time on their 10th trial. So I'm going to put a 10 down there. Now, that's a little bit different than jump, and that's a little bit different than how we work the formula. The formula is how many failures before your first success. And we said, okay, there's nine failures before your first success. And we did that in jump. You know, we, we gave it the probability of winning. We said we want to win once. And, uh, you know, so work out nine failures before my first success. And there's that bar that represents nine failures. And you can see the probabilities are matching. The TI graphing calculator, um, and this is popular for, for many software packages, um, it wants to know what's the chances you win and when do you want to win? The probability of winning is 5%. I want to win for the first time on my 10th try, which obviously means you failed the first nine times. So if I just hit enter, and there you have your uh, probability. So you can see the probability could be worked by hand, which really this is a pretty simple calculation by hand. On jump, you know, once you get the hang of this little calculator menu, you'll be really comfortable with it. You just got to put, uh, practice with it a little bit. And then of course you can work it in the TI graphing calculator. One other really neat thing I wanted to show you. Um, in the notes, I think I talked about the same example. After I worked this example, and you can check out that uh, on your own time, I show how you know um, you could create a distribution and crunch all the values for the probabilities. Now, naturally, the one that we just worked was this one right here, 9, right? 0 0.0315, you know, this one. Now, what if you wanted to create a whole table full of probabilities? Now, I did that here in the notes, but you're probably wondering, you know, what did I do there? Well, one thing that you could do is you could just go to the calculator and change this one input right here from, you know, 10 to 9 to 8 to 7, and you could start crunching all these things. And naturally, you could do the same exact thing in the distribution calculator. You could just select your negative binomial, which, remember, is, again, geometric. And you can just start changing these values um, to get all the all these inputs. Actually, there's another way, which is kind of neat. So let me show you that. So if you go to jump and go to File New and create a new data table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this column. I'm going to call it uh, X. Now to do that, you double click on it, and you see it says column name. So I'm just going to highlight that and put an X there and say OK. And I'm going to click in here and just start typing. Uh, 0, 1. And I'm going to do this actually down to 12, because I you know, I created this one over here to 12, as you can see. And don't forget, this keeps going on and on and on. It's just I stopped at 12. The probabilities um, eventually converge to 0, approximately. But I'm just going to keep doing this. All right, so there it is. Now I'm going to click in the next column, and I'll call this column probability. So I'll call P of X. Now what I want to do right now 
is I want to ask jump to crunch these for me. So over here where it says column properties, I'm going to click on that and the first option you can see says formula. So I'm going to select formula. This is where you could uh, use, you know, find a formula and tell jump hey, apply a formula to this column and do it for every value in that column. Now, naturally, I haven't typed the formula yet, so the first thing I want to do is edit the formula. All right, so in the formula, there is a distribution scenario. Yep, here it is, discrete probability. All right, so I'm going to open that, and if I look around here, here we go, negative binomial probability. So I'm going to select that. Neg binome probability. All right, and it tells you, it returns the probability that a negative binomial distributed random variable is equal to K, where the probability of success is P and the number of successes is N. All right, so P was 0 0.05 for that telemarketer. N was the number of wins, which was one. And now here's where I'm gonna be really clever. Typically for K, we'd put a value in. And if I put a value like nine in, it'll just crunch nine fails before my first success. But you know what, I don't wanna do that. I actually want to tell jump, go to this column for X, grab the zero, work the probability, grab the one, work the probability, and dot, 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 straight down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be really clever and tell it for this K value, look over here in column X. And if you look, notice over here, I'll drag this to make it a little wider. It has a couple of choices here. So what I'm going to do is in this space right here, I'm going to choose X. So I'm saying, hey, work a negative binomial probability for me where the chances I win is 5% and I want to win once and the number of failures is going to be found in the X column. So I'm going to say OK. And as you can see, quick as you can blink your eye, it crunches all that for you. And if you notice, I already worked those probabilities. Um, I don't remember where I worked these, maybe in some other software package or I may, might have even done it in, um, in uh, the calculator. But as you can see, they match and... Um, jump is working, uh, giving me a few extra decimal places, but the numbers are, are identical. This will uh, really, oh, by the way, sorry, notice it says column two here. Uh, it didn't put the P of X in there because I was a little lazy. I have to hit OK still, and then it popped the P of X in there for me. But um, as you can see, this will allow you to work any probability you want, and you know, in doing so, you could um, pull any probability value you'd like off when you're answering you know, my math lab questions, um, when you're doing um, do at home tests and what have you. Now, notice by the way, I stopped at 12, and you know you could fail 12 times before you win, and that probability is about 0.027, the probability of 12 failures before you first win. Like this, you know, scenario here, seven, which is 0 0.0349. Uh, That's the probability of seven failures before you first win. You know, this keeps going. You know, what's the probability of 20 failures and 30 failures? And as you can see, the probability start at 5% and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And here we are at 12 failures. We're down to about 0.027 when we started at 0.05. By the time you get down to like, say, 100 failures before your first success, those probabilities are just going to keep getting smaller and smaller. Now, Jump does a great job showing you this. Um, in the add-ins menu... I go to negative binomial, change these values again. I'll put them back to where they were. As you can see, the highest probability right here, which is that would be winning on your first shot. In other words, what's the probability that the, the telemarketer doesn't fail at all, that the telemarketer gets a sale on their first try? It means zero failures. As you can see, 5%. There's the height of that bar, which is this thing here. Then what happens? The probability start tailing off. And we know those are answers because we just we just crunched them and in, in, uh, in jumped for us, right? Now, as you can see, as the number of failures increases and increases and increases, the probability decreases, decreases, decreases. And as you can see, somewhere around here, these probabilities start getting really super low. So what we say is that as X gets larger and larger and larger, the probabilities get smaller and smaller and smaller. And what do they get smaller to? Well, they naturally converge to zero. Now, theoretically, do they ever hit zero? And that answer is no. Uh, but I'm sure you could, in your head, know that the probability of the telemarketer failing, you know, 100,000 times before they finally win for their first time, uh, it's probably not happening. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, thanks for watching the video.
and I'll talk to you soon.